If you're in a solo or small firm legal practice, you're likely pretty cost conscious. And one of the things you're probably not keen to spend money on is custom printed letterhead. Plus, if a lot of your letters get sent as email attachments rather than by snail mail anyway, why waste paper printing and scanning a letter? Make your own letterhead template instead. First, let's talk about what a template is and how you'd use it. In Microsoft Word, there are two different template file types. Macro-enabled templates, which use the file extension .dotm, and non-macro-enabled templates ending in .dotx. Since we're not building any sort of macro to use with this template, it's the latter format we'll be talking about today, the .dotx file. Saving a Word document as a .dotx file is pretty straightforward. It's just another file type in the drop-down. However, where you save it will determine how accessible it is from within Word. Ideally, you want to be able to click File, New, and see a list of your personal templates up here you can choose from. That location is in two settings within Word Options down here at the bottom left. Once you're in Options, click Save on the left, and your personal templates file location is here. If there's not a file path already listed here, you either need to put the correct file path here for a folder you've already designated, or you can determine where Word, by default, stores your templates. For many Windows users, the most logical location is where their normal template is stored. To find that, type percentage sign app data percentage sign slash Microsoft slash templates into the address bar in Windows File Explorer. After you type that, press Enter, and Windows will take you directly to the folder where your normal Word template is located. Another alternative, if you're using OneDrive, is your Custom Office Templates folder. You can navigate to your OneDrive folder and under Documents, find a folder called Custom Office Templates within it. Again, Click into the address bar in File Explorer and use Ctrl-C to copy that path. Regardless of which location you use, you'll want to copy that file path into two locations in Word. First, in Options, remember, you get there by clicking File, Options. Go to Save and use Ctrl-V to paste that path into the default Personal Templates location. Then go to Advanced, scroll all the way down until you see a button called File Locations, then click User Templates, Modify, and paste that path into that address bar and click OK. Customizing both of these template locations ensures your templates are being accessed from the right location. By the way, if you're looking for a way to enforce a set template firm wide for storing templates on a network drive, I will tell you that's beyond the scope of this video. There are some variables involved vis-a-vis -vis your Word and Windows installation and your network setup that I cannot go into here. Please consult your IT person for assistance on that front. Now that you know where your templates live, let's create a letterhead template. We're going to cover two different types in this video. The classic template has the firm name and address at the top of the first page, possibly some address or other information at the bottom of the first page, and a continuation header at the top of the second and subsequent pages. The other template we'll cover later will have the firm name and address within the left-hand margin, which makes for a cool presentation. First, let's set up the heading on the first page. Use Ctrl-N to start a blank document, then double-click into the header space to edit it. The first thing we want to do is to make sure that our first page header will be distinct from our second and subsequent page header. While your cursor is inside the header or footer, you'll notice there's a set of contextual tabs along the top of the ribbon called header and footer. Depending on which version of Word you're using, I'm in the 2019 version of Office 365, yours may say Header and Footer Tools and be divided into two different tabs. To set up letterhead correctly, 
we want to be sure that the different first page box is checked. That's what's going to enable us to have the letterhead information on the first page and not continue it onto the second and subsequent pages. Once we revise that setting, we can start setting up the first page header. If everything is going to be centered across the top, we can simply use Control E or the Center Paragraph button on the Home tab to do that. If, however, you're going to have some information in the center and perhaps some individual names or other information on the left or right, I recommend using a table to ensure that all that information stays in place. I'm going to the Insert tab and click Insert Table and use this device here to visually insert a one-row, three-column table. That will enable me to insert the firm name and address in the center and any names, email addresses, etc. flush with the right or left margin. I do that rather than tabs because I find it's a lot more stable and I can edit it later without creating a formatting disaster. Now that I have my table, I'm going to select the entire table by clicking on this crossbar and on the Contextual Table Design tab, turn the borders off by clicking Borders, No Border. That'll disable any printable borders, but you notice I can still see grid lines showing the edges of each of the cells. That's controlled on the Table Layout tab by clicking View Grid Lines. I'm going to set the justification in each of these cells so that the information in the left cell is left justified. The information in the center cell is centered. And the information in the right cell is flush with the right margin. Another way I could have done that is to use these buttons in the Alignment command group on the Contextual Table Layout tab. I can set the font for the entire table by selecting the table using the crossbar in the upper left hand corner and using the font drop down on the Home tab. I can resize individual bits of text as I go. Okay, now I have my first page header done. If you want to know how to do one of those left margin headers, use the chapters feature here within YouTube to go to directly to that chapter or see the description below for the timestamp link. If you want to put some information into the first page footer, go into the header footer tools and go to the footer by using the go to footer button to place your cursor inside the footer and then type and format any text you want here. Now that you have your first page set up, you're ready to set up your second page with a letter continuation header. But at this point, you don't have a second page in this document. Just click Close Header and Footer here in the Header and Footer tab and just put in a bunch of hard returns or a page break to temporarily create a second page which you'll delete later once your template is complete. Here on the second page, double click into the header space to set up a second page header. Press Enter to leave a line blank for the recipient's name, and then you're ready to insert a date. If you want the date here to always reflect today's date, the easiest way to do this is to use the Date and Time command in the Insert command group on the Header and Footer tab and pick a format here. However, I usually prefer to insert a field that inserts the date the document was last saved so that if I pull up a letter I saved in the past or reprint it for any reason, 
it will display the date the letter was actually saved and not the date I'm printing it on. To do that, use the Document Info command here and choose Insert Field. In earlier versions of Word, I'm using version 2019 here, you can reach the Insert Field dialog box via the Insert tab under Quick Parts Field. The field I usually prefer is Save Date. In the template, it will display as a string of X's and zeros. However, once you use the template to create a document and save it, the field will update to the date the document was saved. Now I press Enter and type in Page and the page number. Again, I can find Page Number on the Header and Footer Tools tab and choose Current Position, Plain Number. Then press Enter to put a space between the header and the letter text. If you want a separator line, you can insert one here as well. If there are other items you want to ensure are part of your letterhead template, put those in as well. You can put in a self-calculating date using the Save Date field I showed you earlier. A preformatted ray line, the signature block, and any other text prompts you need. Once you have all your elements built, save the document as a .dotx file in your personal templates folder using File, Save As. and changing the Save As type to Word Template. Usually Word will correctly determine what templates folder to save the document under, but double check to ensure you're saving it in the same place as your designated personal templates folder. For instance, if you're using a OneDrive in Windows 10, you may find that your templates are being saved by default to a folder within your OneDrive account. Now that you know the basics of how to create and save a template, here's how you build one of those left margin letterhead styles. The secret here is that instead of embedding the letterhead information into the top of the header, you create a text box that is anchored inside the header to appear along the left side. Before we do that though, let's go to the Header and Footer Tools tab and ensure that Different First Page is turned on so that this text box will only appear on the first page. Once we've confirmed that, we'll create the text box by going to the Insert tab and choosing Text Box, Simple Text Box. You'll notice that once you have the text box inserted and selected, a contextual tab called Shape Format appears. Here's where you can turn off the border by clicking Shape Outline, No Outline, so that all you see is a non-printing border. If you click Position, More Layout Options, you can anchor the text box into an absolute position horizontally relative to the text column to its right and vertically relative to the top margin of the page. Putting this text box into an absolute position and ensuring that there is no overlap will ensure that it does not move when text is inserted into the letter. Insert and format whatever text and graphics you want to appear on your first page.
and then go to the header and footer tools to close the header and continue with setting up the rest of the letter form. Be sure to save your template as a .dotx file in your personal templates folder. Regardless of which style of template you've created, to use it you'll go to File, New, and click on Personal, and click on that template. This will open a new document based on that template. If you ever need to alter that template, you'll need to navigate to that folder and find that template, then right-click and choose Open. If you simply double-click on the template file, you'll instead create a new document based on that template rather than editing the template itself. So that's a primer on how to build a letterhead template in Microsoft Word. What other kinds of templates do you need to build? Let me know in the comments below. This has been Deborah with Legal Office Guru. Thanks for watching.